Colorado State quarterback Braden Fowler Nicolosi was talking about turning down six hundred thousand dollars to go play somewhere else besides Colorado State. <laughs> I'll play this video and then I'll get you guys a take. It's how I was raised. I don't. I, I didn't come here to make money. I came here to win games and play ball for the Rams. So, I think if we play ball here, we do our job, we do what we're supposed to, we win championships, go to the playoff, shock the world, I think the money will come eventually. My job in college isn't to sit here and try to make as much money as I can. I know the new landscape is exciting for a lot of people. There's a lot of opportunities out there, but at the end of the day, I'm a 20 year old kid with higher goals in life than to make money in college. And so as much of a blessing as that would be and set myself up for a long time, I think if I do my job here and we, we get it done and perform like how we know we're supposed to, I think there's several people on this team that will be taken care of for life after. Man, uh, Matt and JB, what are you guys' thoughts on this? JB, I'll let you go ahead first. Yeah, you go first. What's your, what's your question? What question? are your thoughts on that? Him turning down six hundred thousand dollars from another school to stay at Colorado State to win championships is what he said, and go to the playoff. Yeah. And a lot of guys, gonna, a lot of guys will be set up for life. And six hundred thousand dollars apparently is a ton of money. What? What? I don't know, but it's sad that college college football has become this. Like we're, yeah. I, I don't know your take, but like it sounds like Matt's like going to talk about him like turning it down. Be- I'm going to talk about being offered it. Like the sad part is we're being poached every day on someone's roster. And now we're, we're going to talk shit to the kid for saying, I'm going to stay somewhere with, with Norvell. I know Norvell. Well, Matt and I talk about all the time. I know Jay. um, He is a retention guy. He's always been able to hold on to his talent, even at Nevada, K state, his days around as a coordinator. He's always, kids have always liked them. I do know that. So, it isn't a shocker that the kid's staying. The shocker is that, A, is it the truth? Uh, B, why are we being poached at an all-time high and no one's really talking about that? Uh, kudos to him. I wish we had more guys like him. If it's a true story, though. If it's not true, then it's just a bunch of bullshit, and it so, sounds like some some bullshit. I don't know. So let me, let me ask you this. Look. The, oppor- the opportunity, if he wants to stay at Colorado State, I respect that. I'm with it. I dig it. I don't have a problem with it at all. You're loyal. But if Kansas State offers you 600 Gs, I would hope that Colorado State at least is paying him three. Like, it's just the nature of the business now. You, you got to put your money where your mouth is. That's the way this works. And until they stop poaching... It's going to increase. It's just going to get worse. So here's my I, issue, Matt. Like, when do you call? I, I appreciate the loyalty, but I really hope that Colorado State is at least paying him something. And and then the other thing is, what, is he going to turn down 300 G, Gs from CSU to stay there? Fuck no, he's not. So it's not just about I didn't come here to make money. So apparently, Colorado State is the cheapest fucking NIL place in the country. And Jay Norvell found a way to keep Horton and this Nicolosi kid, who are probably both pro pro players at least draft picks and see if they can do it in the NFL. Like they're not paying them anything. I have a hard time. I would say they are. I would say they are. Buddies of mine have told me that they're paying people um, quite heavily up there. So I, I, maybe they just don't want their shit out there in the, in the public. Isn't he putting it out there though? Look, saying that he wouldn't go somewhere and play for money and he can't be poached. So I hope he's not making any money at Colorado state then, because it makes him sound like a total fucking hypocrite to me. That's all I'm saying. And to it, even the have look, I know their goal is to win the Mountain West and go in the playoff, and they could. Jay Norvell was really good at Nevada, won the Mountain West. They have a lot of talent on that team at Colorado State, all right? But, again, that would only increase your NIL value. So, you don't, you're not going to do commercials. You're not going to take the money from the car dealerships. You're not going to – all the uh, – Coach JB and I both played in, the, in an era where we got stipend checks and couldn't get a fucking dime and got to spend it for hot dogs and – fucking bullshit so the ability to make money is on the backs of everybody that came before you it's almost disrespectful to not take advantage of it so i really hope that they're not paying him a fucking red cent because it makes him sound like a hypocrite yeah i I don't i don't like i don't like the fact that here's the thing i'm not gonna throw the kid under the bus without knowing but he's answering questions that are being asked to him and like we're we're skipping over the fact that a bunch of cowardly pussies 
are poaching these kids every day at every program in the country. And we don't want to address the cowardly pussy in the room, K-State or, K- or whoever that's poaching these dudes and calling out those guys. And then when a coach does it, like Norvell will, he'll call out guys and then they bash Norvell. And I'm sitting there well, like, oh, yeah, but shit rolls downhill, coach. If yeah. Ohio State comes and plucks your quarterback, Will Howard, which they did, yeah. they're going to find the next guy to go pluck. That's just the way this works. Again, if they don't want it to happen, then change the fucking rules. No, like, but, but, yeah, I, I'm with you. But I'm saying, like, we don't address the fact that we grew up that that's illegal. It's still, by definition, in the rule book, illegal. Yeah, yeah it and happens, it happens over, me almost every day. But we're skipping over the fact, and we're just putting it on this kid addressing the question. Like, kudos to the kid for addressing the question, but he's asked the question. I don't think he came out like, hey, dog, guess what? I turned down 600 racks to stay at Colorado State. No, he was asked the question. So I think in fairness to him, we got to look into the bigger picture of things, and I would be calling out the coach. Hey, K-State, fuck you. That's a good, good, that's a really good take. Look, but at the same time, bro, it the ability for the players now to make money is so important if they don't want the per- the, the purging to keep happening, which look in the off season and when the transfer portal opens up, the I don't my my phone doesn't stop ringing. It, can you get can you get this kid to transfer from here? And what do you think about this kid? Does he is he mad about his depth? Blah 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 blah. So it's a it's a big problem. But again, NCAA and college football change the fucking rule, change the goddamn problem, and there won't be a fucking problem no more. So. It, it's and Tim, but they're not going to. And the problem is the kids so are they'll be never football. change this fucking this no. bullshit that they're doing. And we're and we're blaming gonna... kids. We're sitting here blaming kids who know nothing, don't know what they don't know. And we're sitting here blaming kids as to why the grown men in the room have made a rule that is fucking setting them up for failure at all time rate and giving them opportunity at all time rate. So guess well, what? Hold on. How is it setting them up for failure if they get paid? Well, first of all, there's guys in, the, in college that football. Help? There's there's guys playing college football. One guy for Arkansas right now, he's 29 years old. If you don't think that's setting him up for failure, well, we got a problem. He played, major league, he played major league baseball for seven years, dog. He has yeah. more money in the bank than all these kids. Yeah. How played, is that setting him up for failure? What? He played three years and got three more for COVID. So I, let's well, just be clear. That's six fucking years. What? I'm how is saying. playing major league baseball for six years setting you up for failure, though? No, he played three years baseball and he got three years COVID. That's six years. So cool. three that, of those football even better for him. So yeah. how does that set him up so for that, failure? That, there's there's eighth year guys, Matt. You know that Florida has an eighth year guy. We I got a guy. Him. We got a guy. Utah entering his eighth season as a quarterback. I understand, like, but how does on. that? How is how is that opportunity setting up Cam Rising to fail? It's not. I didn't say it's setting him. I said it's setting him up for failure, and it's giving him opportunity all at the same time at an all time clip. The failure part is we're entering the NFL at 27, 28, 29 at all time rates. That's fact. It's statistically proven. And there, in my opinion, you know, me and you go back and forth. I believe the product is worse at the NFL level right now because of the age and the and the gap that we're allowing in the college football landscape to allow these kids to continue to stay here. And then we go to the NFL and they don't even either A, play right away or B, play too quickly and are not ready, yet they're 29. So hopefully Michael Penix Jr. at 27 can play earlier than later. So can Bo Nix this weekend. Hopefully he'll start maybe as a rookie, but he's 25 or 26. We got guys all-time high sitting around college football expecting or expecting money to stay longer and in my opinion, it is allowing the sport to actually take a, 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 a black eye. I think they're getting a black eye on the sport in the big thick of things, not necessarily just a couple here and there issues. I think it's good for certain people, no doubt, especially a guy like this kid at Arkansas who probably won't play in the NFL. To your point, he played baseball, got paid already, getting some sort of money now at college at 29. And then when he leaves, what does he do? Who knows? Maybe he goes coaches. Maybe he's a GA. I don't know. I just don't see the benefit for the college game at 29 years old playing, taking up a high school kid's scholarship. I don't see the benefit. Well, I mean, Chris Winkie played baseball and won the Heisman. But Joel it was Platt, a bum in football, bum in the NFL. Yeah. Well, okay, but 
No, I get it. it, it so did Brandon right. Weeden. Joe Flatt Weed. is three years Brandon older Weed. than me and played baseball for four years before he came to see you and walked. Brandon on. Weeden. Brandon Weeden. Like that didn't. That does just because they're older doesn't mean that they're. That's not bad, in my opinion. No, it's I mean, not I, bad, I, but I'm just saying there's only a few of those guys, Matt. That actually, there's not a whole bunch of them. You know what I'm saying? Brandon Weeden, I mean, Tyler Murray, a couple guys. You know. I understand there's not a bunch of them, but. Out of the one, the older guys that come in are usually more focused and act like grown men and not little kids. So I, I don't know if we see eye to eye in this. Okay, point. so look, you 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 disagree with it, but give me your side. Why are you agreeing with it? Well, isn't it a case by case issue? Like if the kid's older and he played baseball or he's in the military or is a SEAL or some shit, now he has college eligibility. And he can play, then we're rolling. If it's a gimmick, then that's something else. But but let me let me ask you something. Is that are you discussing the player or are you discussing because I think we're on this, I think we're not, I don't think I communicated correctly on your show. I'm I'm talking landscape collectively, a sport, uh the, the actual college football landscape entering the NFL as an overall sport. I think you're discussing because you are in the helping kids uh business. I think you're looking at it as an individual basis. I'm looking at it as a sport. So I just want to be clear before you answer. Well, I don't think it's bad for either. I don't think that having an older guy on the field is a bad thing if he has eligibility and can play. And I don't think I think it sets a good precedent for the younger guys and teaches them how to operate a little bit and gives a little bit more flexibility and diversity in the room. It, you know, that I think that's a good thing. So I don't think that there's Look, there's obviously negatives in the process on how things are done, but I don't think there's any negatives in paying the kids, and I don't think there's any negatives in allowing an older player to chase his opportunity if he was doing something else. So uh, here's I, my I don't take. think it's a bad I'll, thing at all. I'll give you my take. I know Bailey wants to – I'll give you my take is why I think it's bad for college football as a whole. Number one, we got older guys chasing a dream that were that young kids' dreams are being washed away for. So they are entering the portal because now you get an older kid who takes my position, who's played and been there, done that. Now I got to go enter the portal because we know that in this era, that's what they do quicker than, than staying and fighting and competing. They just enter the portal. So I believe it ups the number in the portal. And I believe it ups the, the number of competition that people actually want to stay and fight and play. And these kids now are losing in high school, either a sitting out due to COVID still, being meaning that they did they passed the test uh, without even having to take an ACT SAT. Now it's a sliding scale GPA issue. They have to sit out now because Division One scholarships are not being offered to as many high school kids as they once were because they rather jump in the portal and take portal guys, which we all know is fact. And then when the coach, the high school kid sits out a year, instead of going JUCO, which you and I discuss on my show all the time, they sit out a year. And then when you add a 29-year-old to the party and the kid goes there and then says, oh, I can't compete here anyway, I'm transferring, now that's the snowball effect that I see is a bigger problem. Not Kudos to the kid. Kudos to the kid that makes it and he's older and he gets an opportunity. I just think overall snowball effect, we're not seeing it right now, Matt, but I think in three to four years we're going to sit back and be like, fuck. This is this game. This game has gone to an area that we've never seen before. We're we're losing the ground, our blood life, which is high school and JUCO. We've lost that, and now we've we're, we're eating each other in the portal. We're eating off each other like two like we don't want cows to do, right? We don't want them to eat each other. They're we're eating each other now. Eventually, you're gonna run out of the well, blood life. I will say this: as a player, I would rather have my future in my own hands. Like if I if you don't. If you're not going to give me what I'm worth in college, it teaches them to stand up for themselves, number one. You don't really know you can fucking tell a coach to go fuck himself until you're in the NFL and someone disrespects you. And one of the fucking veterans is like, don't let that shit happen. And you're like, okay, I can actually stand up for myself now. If you have money in the fucking bank and, and all of a sudden you're playing really well and the college that you're at doesn't honor that and somebody else wants to pay you, that is the definition of free agency and the ability to make money off your, your quality. So... I don't care if it's referred to as a mercenary, like playing for free sucks. So it, I, I, this whole I, question, I guarantee you this fucking kid is not playing for free. Horton is not playing for free. No, so, not. that's what no I'm way. saying. No way. So but, but, if you're, but, I guess they should give us all this money away since he doesn't, since Kansas State's bad for offering him 600 grand and he's not at Colorado State to make money. 
I hope he's not making any money at Colorado State because it makes him sound like a fucking hypocrite to me. So I don't know. I don't, Let's I don't, I don't read that. I don't, I don't read this the same as you. I, you must be seeing it some way different. He was asked a question. He's answering the question. Yeah, I'm looking at it at, from his point that he's defending the coach for saying, hey, K-State, stop poaching my guys. And I think the quarterback had his back. And I think that's what we need more of. I mean, that, but that's your cool. point. Yeah. I hope, I hope that if he's going to show this much faith and love and support for his university, I hope that the university is breaking him off and yeah, paying him. I'm, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. I, I can't just be a fucking $100 handshake. Like, hey, thanks for all the work. Like, yeah, if yeah. you're valuable, that's how – yeah. The Joker says it. If you're good at something, never do it for free. If you're valuable, you need to be paid because of your value. That's just the way it works. Yeah, I don't think he's staying there if he's not getting paid. I think he has faith. No fucking way. So that, that's my whole point, though. It makes what he's saying sound a little yeah. fishy. But to, to, your, to your overall college point, like these these cats that are, you know, getting to control their narratives kind of because they have money in the bank. I also, you know, me and you always disagree on the whole overall part, point of this because I, I don't think you can coach anymore – with this new law and rules in place. I'm all for being paid. I've always been for getting kids paid. I just don't agree with how they're doing it now because it's open Pandora's box to where I don't think you can coach kids anymore like we did. I think we're making less men in the world than we used to. And I don't think you can actually teach kids anything now because they do have money in their bank at a 17 to 20 year old range. And I don't think they're invested like they used to be to getting to be the best possible player they wanted to be because the NFL ultimately was the prize. Now I could stay in college five, six years and make about two, three million dollars and, and 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 make my rookie contract money at twenty six in the college. Good. That's so, a good but, thing. But Look, I, I don't we, I think must, it's good for them. Must be, we must yeah. be talking about two different groups of kids, bro, because yeah. the guy no, I mean, I mean, good for the kid. and all my guys are just yeah. they're more motivated to go get paid. And yeah. go to the NFL now. I just, yeah. I don't see the same thing you do, and I, yeah. I disagree. And but that's the. I only, only see, I only see it because I see what we're seeing at all time rate. We're seeing that the, to me, like we get to the NFL, which I ultimately judge this off of, um, like the injuries at all time high, the the lack of playing in games, the lack what we call load management, whatever you want to say. I just start to see it snowball, and that's that's why I look at it like. Oh, good for the kid. Get paid, dog. I want the kid to be paid, no question. But I'm just saying the way, the manner that we're doing it, I think we're seeing more and more of l- lack of tough skin. I see. I think we expect now more and more than give. We want, 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 and we don't want to give, give, give anymore at all. Not only to the game, to your brethren, but to the sport that has allowed us to fucking earn this money. I think it's a slap in the face. I look, maybe it's a national thing that you see that I don't, but for 15 years, I've been fucking working with generation after generation, and I don't see that at all. Every kid, Trey Zoom getting paid at AM, started 40 games at left tackle, that he's earned that fucking money, and he's just more motivated to go in the first round. And it, I just think that there's a lot of fucking dogs out there that now they're getting paid, and it, some people don't like it. And, and look, it, it's, I'm not saying that's I like you. It. I, I like mean, it. I, mean, I like want it. the kids to get paid, but yeah. I like at the same time, it. I, I don't think paid. it's ruining yeah. things the way you do. So yeah, yeah, I like it. I want them to get paid, but I just think that overall, I think as they move up the ranks, I don't know. I just see that. I just see. I it. think you should be. I think they should make as much fucking money as humanly possible immediately. So I, I agree. I agree. And JB, if you want them to get paid, but you don't like this format, what's the solution? What do you believe the best solution is? Uh, but see, I, this is the thing. We, we've skipped over the fact of this is not name, image, and likeness anymore. So we need to stop saying it. Like, it's not. And when I first came out four years ago, and Matt and I were talking about this years ago, and I said, listen, if we're going to pay them off name, image, and likeness, what that means is I can walk into Colorado's student store right now and buy a Matt McChesney jersey, and Matt McChesney gets paid for that purchase yes. or Cadillac goes to Matt and says, here, Matt, I would like you to represent Cadillac. I'm going to use your name and number on our cars and our license plates. And I, that's name, image, and likeness. It's not that dog. Stop saying it. It's not name, image, and likeness. No more. It's never been. It's pay for play. It started four years ago. And this is all a gimmick for collectives to fatten the pockets of certain entities that are actually paying guys that used to pay us, me and that, 
with a white envelope in a in a in a room. That's what's happening now. And now we look at it saying, oh shit. That never, NIL, that never happened to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and me too. But the NIL, NIL, bro, that's name, image, and likeness. It's not that. It's not. It's the highest bidder gets the guy. Stop well, it. That, that's what it is. That's any business. Like if well, you have that's leverage, not what it started as. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but if you have leverage as a coach, okay, put yourself in coach's shoes. You're a coach. You're you're Coach X at, at X University. You're killing it. Y University doubles your salary, and X University says stay because you're loyal. You're gone. You're but, going to but, Y but, University but, immediately. But Matt, that's not the question Bailey's asking. I'm saying well, this, yeah, but if you have leverage, regardless if you're a player or a coach, it's been earned. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, you 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 squeezed out the pace, and there's no way to get it back. If this was really nil, then guess what you should have did? You should have signed Bailey. On a as a as his star, you should have signed Matt as his star. Matt coming in as a four star, he gets X amount of dollars, and then he allowed to get this nil money over here. Bailey yeah. came in as a three star. Guess what? You get less money than Matt, but you're allowed to get this dollars on your side. Well, now what, what they've done. Anyway. Now what they're doing, but that's now with this collective bargaining sort of agreement with this uh, revenue sharing. Now that's going to be the salary they get, and NIL money is going to be on the side. That's going to be collective. That I'm cool with that too. I just want like I don't care if they they have twenty million dollars each school, like you're talking about, to a lot. I'm cool with that too. I don't really care how it's done. But personally, I'd love them to sign multi-year contracts and be held to them, and not be able to go in the transfer portal and shit. So that's if my that point. has to happen, then I'm, but, with, I'm with that too. I just want the guys to get fucked. What I, what I'm saying is though. This is how it should have been from the gate or not at all. We now keep changing it every single year. And now we have accepted the norm to be the latest rule change. No, well, go back four years true. to NIL. NIL was name, image, and likeness. We've changed it four times in four years. Well, now. then if they do you think they're changing it for the better or the worse? Now they at least have 20 million to a lot. They're trying I, to make it right, in my opinion. I it's think, just the I NCAA. Think, Keep that in mind. And they're all fucking Yeah, really non-carrying stupid. assholes of America. They're never going yeah, to they they're never going to pay you. They're always going to avoid to pay you. And that's the bottom line. They're the they, they it's a meat market. The kids are pieces of meat. The coaches are pieces of meat. Uh, contrary Everybody to is, belief. Everybody's a play. They're everyone's Everybody. a nail to hammer. They run the shit. And here's the thing about it though. Like, if we look at it as a big picture thing, I'm sitting there looking at it like, okay, I would have paid them off their scholarship, and then I would allow them to go get their own money on NIL deals on the side. Now. Having said that, that means you have to stay there. If you leave, you don't get NIL money at the new school, which would allow you to deter you from transferring at an all-time rate and allow you to actually drop your nuts and compete a little bit to earn that money. And then if you go, let's say you are a three-star and you make this money, if you take a four-star's job, guess what? You get his money. That is a, It was an easy rule to do and make this rule when we talked about this four years ago with Sean Salisbury and these other guys, and I was like, I don't understand why it was so hard because we already knew they were going to come down to this point we're in now. And there would be something that came up that they didn't forward think about and outside the box think about, which now we see revenue sharing and, and union representation. Now you're employees. Good. But, are you, but are you an employee of a private school or not? Or is it a public school? Can well, you release, relinquish your income? No, it's, not at Penn it's, State. It's not at just, like, just like businesses, though. Every business... Whether it's in a different city, there's different rules, there's different things you have to abide by in order to operate business. That's no different here. At least college football is now a business. They're not exploiting their workers anymore. That is a good thing. It's not just a coach getting paid and having all this authority over his players because they're getting fucking nothing. Now, if you disrespect me as a man and you treat me like a piece of shit and you just you don't help me, but yet you just it's just the constant, it's like the Tua interview. I don't think Tua's soft. I think that that absolutely happened. Like the head, the head coach just demeaned him for fucking two years and told him he was a piece of shit to where he almost believed it. That happens constantly. I, I, I've been coaching on my own for 15 years. Like I, I've even done it before where you negatively influence a kid and you have to learn from it as a coach and it, it, admit that you're wrong. So I just think that this is a good step in the right direction in that regard. The players have a little bit of power. Now, is it going to backfire at times? Yes. Guys are immature, and they'll probably go, I'm a grown man. All that bullshit will happen. But in, in the grand scheme of yeah. things, I think that it's better that, 
That's why I disagree. Yeah, I, coach I, I would disagree. I would disagree with you on the whole man thing. Like, but I, I I'm glad you addressed it. Like, the, you already. We always used to have these kids, especially the punk ass shitbirds. I'm grown man. You can't hold me. Up. Can't well, talk to me now, you, now you have it more than ever. And I, well, now and I, now I, can't you just fucking do it? Look, if you're getting paid six hundred motherfucking G's. Yeah, 800 G's, a million dollars to play, and you suck and have an attitude, I'm going to be more on your ass. Motherfucker, you're making a million dollars. You're driving a Bentley and shit. You think you're big time? You're playing like a bitch. But he like, does. I'm going to go does. after you harder, not just like, yeah. I already paid him. If he Matt, you paid, him money. Yeah, you but I didn't pay him. I didn't well. fucking pay him shit. But you already gave him well. Money. Well, you, I know, but you, we've already well, given well, look, them. Look, if, I, if you're a good player and you're making that money, I'm not the only one going to be applying pressure. Social media is a dog. Oh, yeah. People will be all over his ass. We'll be talking shit. Everybody will be on him. He's making all this money. He can't play. He's going to have to transfer down. He'll lose a bunch of money. Expectation now comes with your fucking dollar amount, players. So hey. coaches, coaches that look at it like they can't control the guy anymore now, I look at it like the expectation controls him. It's my job to, to maximize him. And if he's a turd, he's the one self-harming. He's the one not buying into getting coached. He's the one that's going to go, well, look, I'm a big timer because I got 600 grand. Like, that's one thing in that interview from Nicolosi that really bothered me. Bro, I understand what I'm about to say is a little smug, but 600 grand is not that fucking much money. It's really not. I mean, you can invest it and try and finagle it a little bit, but Uncle Sam's taking his chunk. And it's just, it goes really fast, dog. That's all I'm saying. Life is expensive, especially in inflation USA. So it just, it, 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 this whole topic is the old school way of looking at things, which I still think is important at some, some capacity. It's just not the way it is anymore. So there's too much money. It's hey, too much business. Hey, it's funny. It, we, it, we won't it, talk about this on your show. Cause I got, I'm gonna do a rant on it later, but. It's funny you brought up that Tua thing. We're, we're obviously going to disagree on it. But I, I I posted it. My point is I posted it, and I'm getting murdered by all the fanboys. Not only Miami fanboys, it's unbelievable. I'm getting killed by Alabama fans now. Yeah, well, he played there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just – I don't think Tua – I don't think Tua is a punk because uh, he has the emotion and he's willing well, to it's not. talk about I, it. I, so what I said was I think we've accepted – the soft approach as a society is my point to this tweet I made. And I'm like, back in the day when Belichick would motherfuck Tom Brady, no one fucking showed any sympathy to him. He only went out and won seven fucking rings. Yeah, but, but I Bill, guess when Bill Walsh was not Bill Belichick. But, 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 but when Bill Walsh used to fucking slam Joe Na Montana in the locker, no one said anything to him. Well, but the, now he, Flores is not Bill Walsh. <laughs> I, I know, but listen. Now we're sitting there like, it's a societal thing, man, to me. That's my whole point. Of the I was like, wait up. So now we hear Tua tell his bad stories about Flores, and now we're hearing the narrative of, oh, it's okay, Tua. The, the result is this. You're still been a first-round knockout or not made the playoffs. You're still well, – your arm has not – They made the you're, playoffs last year. What are you talking about? That's what I said. You're either a first-round knockout – Okay, you're either knocked out in the first round or not making the playoff. They're the same result. <laughs> well, that's not true. Not making the playoffs and losing in the first round is not. That's not correct. I know. That's the the last few years. That's what they've done, though. Yeah, but it's okay. not the same thing at all. Well, there's not no difference the between the floor and them. Making the playoffs and losing in the first round. You made the playoffs. You have something to build on. Yeah. I mean, come, that, oh. That's not. That's that's. What? So what? What is has Tua's arm gotten stronger since Flores left? Is he still inaccurate? I think he's way, he's way better under McDaniel than he is Flores, and I'm not the only one that thinks that. I just I think it's it's okay to coach your guys hard and also have a good relationship with them. It like a coach that walks in every day while I'm trying to do the job and tells me I'm a piece of shit and I don't want I don't want you here and I wanted the other guy. So go get the other guy, motherfucker. Like two is two. I just hard press. I just be like fuck you, bitch. Man, so you like, know you know better. You know Matt. In this, living in this life with Josh McDaniels and these fuckboy coaches that we get out here that are puppets in the show, you've dealt with some of them. And I just find it hard pressed because all the guys that I hear and know that know Flores and, and praise Flores. And now I see Tua come out and I'm just like, wait up. You think Tua, you think Flores really a defensive guy is making a point to go over to Tua every yes. day and motherfucker? 
he did it to him constantly. Ah, he, did, yeah. it, he did not want to draft him in the first place. But look, look, I, was just, I, I was just respected by Josh McDaniels, and I walked away from the NFL. When my that's career what, ended, yeah. When I was my career ended and he stuck his fucking head in the training room and said, yeah. Oh, you got ran over my golf cart, huh? And started laughing about it. Right. I packed up my shit and walked out. You're not no, I, I know me. it happens. I know it happens. Like Bill so, like, was I'm easy. Just saying, like just yeah. because you're a coach doesn't give you the right to just be a total prick all the yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, look what Urban did his last in, in in the league. He thought he could do that to the kicker and all that old shit. Listen, I know it happens. My point is like back in the day, I don't know if it would have been this. I know we don't have social media back today. I know there are other things. I'm the old head on the on the porch yelling at the clouds and all that shit. But I th- I, I don't think anyone really cared at the back in the day. Like, it, get your job done, dog. You're the QB, dog. You're also the two hundred million dollar motherfucker. No one felt sorry for you, dog. I don't. Well, I don't. Was, just like just like Nicolosi was asked the question, so was Tua. Tua was directly asked this question, and he's just responding to. It. He didn't bring it up. Yeah. He didn't go air his laundry. He's responding to a question, and he was being honest. I mean, Flores is a dick. And yeah. look, it's okay. Look, there's a lot of dick coaches. That's fine. Some guys can handle it. Some guys can't. I'm just saying, usually when you're a – and I know this because I'm a dick coach. Like, there's some – I can't coach some people. They're too soft. But I'm also – once I coach you hard and you do your job, I'll love you up quick. I'm real fast to help guys that buy in. So that, that's all I'm saying. If you're constantly trying to buy in and help and you're constantly getting shit on, maybe there's something wrong with the other dude doing the shit. That's all. 